Hi everyone, this is a tutorial on the effectiveness of magnetic shielding and the pitfalls of when it's not done correctly. Um, and these, what we have here in front of us, are just three tin cans. So I wanted to put together this simple demonstration while I'm waiting on to go on to a field trip to visit a lot of different hardware stores here and go through all their inventory, see what I can use to make what happened that you saw the other two videos that I did with my hand, make it so I'm hands-free and, and I'll have a mechanical system where it'll do its own thing by itself. Because in the other video, you saw me doing this with my hand, moving these back and forth. Wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. Good Lord. Oh, wow. Oh my word. Well, I'm gonna make it so these will move back and forth on their own. So, meanwhile, I wanted to demonstrate here the importance, the pros and cons of shielding and doing it properly versus those who don't do it properly. And one video online that has purposely, intentionally created fake, false, misleading information about uh, magnetic shielding is not the holy grail. Um, they falsify their results. If you just type in you know, what I just said, it'll come up right away. So, here, this is what we need to know. These cans are a little bit smaller than the next one. So we'll put the smallest can in the next size up, and then we'll put the next can the next size up. So now we have triple. Now, watch this. Here are these two magnets that I was playing with in the video the other day. As you can see, you know, this the real deal. Okay, real magnets. Mm. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put these magnets inside of this um, soup can. That's all this was, this was a soup can. I don't know the, the, the makeup of this, metal and steel, tin, I, I just don't know. But we call them here in the United States, we call them tin cans. Probably back in the day, they were really called, made, of, made out of uh, tin. Okay, so now let's see here. Did putting shielding around those magnets help any? Let's see. Nah, I don't think so. All right. Oh, okay. Well, then let's do this. Let's double up on the shielding. Okay. Now we got twice the shielding, right? So now let's see. Did it help any? Nah. Nope. We still have the same issue. All right. Well, hey. Maybe a third layer will be the magic bullet. Alrighty now. Let's see what's going on here. Nope. That didn't help either. So, what's going on here? How come three layers of metal is not shielding the magnetic flux to the point where the paper clip, whoop, where the paper clip will no longer stick to it? Well, it's a very simple answer. Each piece of metal, each can, is touching the other can. So the magnetic flux is transferring in energy from one piece of metal to the other metal to the other metal. There are other ways to show this simple principle. So, if you do this, then you'll get about 99% cancellation of the flux. Get these out of here. Okay. What I'm going to do, or slash we, if you're going to do this yourself, you need to take your smallest can and wrap crepe paper all the way around it, many layers until it's thick enough, no more than a quarter of an inch thick, but yet it will still fit in your next can. So as you can see, I've got quite a bit of little room right there to work with. See, right there, there you go. See? So I'll wrap this plenty in crepe paper, and also I'll do the same thing on the bottom. You'll see why doing the bottom as well is important. We just don't want this can to touch the other can, and we want to keep it equally away from all the edges. Then we're going to do the same thing with this can, wrap crepe paper around it over and over again until it's nice and thick, including the bottom, but not so thick that it won't fit in this can. As you can see, we have 
quite a bit of room here to work with. So I should be able to get my nearly quarter of an inch all the way around this as well. Then watch what happens when we put each can back inside of each can. And then you tell me, you think this paper clip is still going to continue to stick to the can? Now we have here a paper cutting board. And I found what I believe to be is crepe paper. It's been forever in storage, probably for about 60 years or so, maybe 70 years by now. Um, it's pretty thick. It's, you can see it's aging. And uh, that's what we will use. And what we need to do here is that we want to wrap this paper around this can so it's just underneath the edge. It doesn't have to be exact. If it's up or down, it's fine. But just as so long as the, there's enough cover in the can so it won't touch the other can by accident. And then, of course, we need to, to cut it as close to the bottom as possible within reason. But I love it. It cuts beautifully. Okay, so we'll just put that to here. All goes well. This will fit the can beautifully. Yeah, it's just a little bit too wide. Okay, just take a smidge off. Move that magnet over a little bit more. And there we go. And we'll just wrap this can. Just enough. Also acts as a spacer, so that's important. Because we want we want to maximize the space all the way around. Okay. And then well, that comes out just perfect, doesn't it? Nice and tight. All right, let's do the next scan, which will be this size down here now. Next, all right. It fits down there just barely, but it fits in there. Boy, it's just snug. Okay, now I have to do the bottoms. Okay, now I have these wrapped as thick as I can um, because it's still got to fit down inside the can. It just barely fits in here, but it's snug. And this one here is even tighter. I'm, it's going to be a little tricky getting that down in there, but I can get it in there. So, but I don't want to put it in there until it comes time. Rather than cut out a bunch of round circles and waste more paper, I want to use these spacers here that I've been using in my other demonstrations. All we need is the space on the bottom. As long as these cans are not going to be touching each other on the inside. Okay, so let's do this here. Put some down in there. Uh, one more maybe. That's about right. Okay, and then we'll take some more of these spacers here, toss these down in there. Yeah, maybe a couple more. Two more. There we go. Okay, and see here. And of course, the, the last thing I think to say, 
is that we're supposed to keep the magnets as well from touching the metal. But these already have some limited insulation around them. I don't know if it's enough, but we'll guess we'll find out here in real time. All right, so here we go. Now, we'll put this in here. Oh, let me add some spacers on the bottom of this too, just, just to be on the safe side. Okay. There we go, that should be enough. Keep these magnets off the bottom of the can. But there's no room to put any spacers around these because these just barely fit into the, into the can. Okay, there we go. Alrighty. So at this stage, I'd like to think that nobody is expecting this to work at this time. Of course not, okay? So now let's take this can which now has been, it's got the, the, the spacer around it. And let's put this in this can here. Just carefully, it should fit in there. There we go, now it's in. Okay, let it fall in there, there we go. Okay, it doesn't look like it's trying to touch any of the sides. Um, and it's, it's getting kind of close to, to the one side there. So let me uh, modify this a little bit, put some spacers in on the side. Put one there, I'll put one here. Now it's starting to get tight in there, okay. And then one more right over here. There we go. Okay, you see what I've done there? This way, I'm, I'm trying to ensure this can stays even space away from all the edges. Okay, now, now let's try this, okay. You, we should see some improvement. Okay, it's, it's still got a magnetic field, but it's not very strong. Okay, now let's do this one more time. Oh, this barely fits in there. Okay, as far in as it goes. All right, now let's see what happens. There's almost no magnetic flux at all now. It's almost all gone. So he doesn't want to stick to it anymore. A little bit of magnet, a little bit of magnetism there. I believe what's going on here, the reason it's not getting full work is because the magnet inside is smashed up against the wall in here. So I would have to take one of those magnets out and put it in the middle. Um, but here and over there, we have almost no magnetic field at all now. It's almost all gone. And on the bottom, it won't even pick up the paper clip on the bottom. So it won't even do it. There's no magnetic field on the back side. See, they didn't want to stick. But on the side, it wants to stick just a little, little bit. There's just a tiny, tiny little bit of field. And like I said, it's because the magnets in here are mashed right up against the wall. It's supposed to be a quarter of an inch gap between the magnet and the can wall, and there's not. Uh, it's it's almost literally right up against the, the, the side of the wall of this. So let me cut the footage here and see what I can do to render this. I found, uh, uh, I guess we call it a styrofoam tube, I guess. It's hollow in the middle. It's almost the exact same diameter as the inside diameter of this. It's real close. So what I'm gonna do here, I wanna take this magnet here, I'll take it out of the casing, and I'm gonna put it inside of this here. Should fit. Yeah, it fits, just barely, but it fits. Push down there with a pencil. Okay, as far down as it goes. Now we'll put it in this can. Okay. Well, I could feel it pulling on the sides of that can. Okay, there we go. 
So now let's see if we have any magnetic field left. Uh, well, that's up there. It doesn't count. It's down here. Because I don't have... I, I, this down here is where the flux has been blocked the best. So what happens up here, it bleeds. The flux bleeds out and over the edge. As you can see, as I move this around, keep turning this. And of course, we have nothing on the back side. So as you can see, oh, oh, oh no, that's the, the top side. Remember, the flux leaks out over the top. So we have to keep this test away from the top. But as you can see, it seems to be just a smidge, I mean a smidge of magnetic attraction there. Just a teensy weensy little bit. But on the bottom, it's basically zero. At least what I can detect. But on the rest of the can, it, there is a, a smidge. I do mean a smidge. This is very sensitive and you just put it in your magnet it tells you what pole it is you know, north versus south if you go back and forth you can see the light flips back and forth okay so when you get it near this can press the button down we're not getting anything if you go toward the top of course it lights back up because that's where the, the leakage is the leakage stops Right about there. Can you see that? There we go. Go back up to here. The leakage stops right about there. Okay, and then from here on down, go back up, down. You can see there's nothing. Nothing even on the bottom. And you can see if I come over this magnet here, you see it lights up just fine. All right, one last time. You can see the leakage is up here. Let me get that on camera real good. There we go. Okay. So, and they come down here. The leakage stops. There's just nothing here. It's only up here is where we have it leaking out. Okay. So, but anyway, this goes to show you that if you space the layers apart, the outcome of the suppression of the magnetic flux totally changes versus if we allow each piece of metal to be layered on top of each other with no spacing at all. So that was the whole point of this tutorial, to show you the effectiveness and why spacing between each layer is so important. Because if we don't space it, we don't get the same desired effect. And that being is because when metal touches the metal of the other metal, the magnetic energy is transferred directly through it. Another way to show that is real simple. I have here just a good old-fashioned screwdriver. This is a piece of metal. And if I touch the screwdriver with it, the screwdriver does not pick it up. So it doesn't pick it up. But if I take this magnet and put it way down here at the base of this screwdriver, even though it's nowhere near the end, its energy will transfer down the rod of the screwdriver allow this to start picking things up. See, now it wants to pick it up. See? There you go. So the magnetic energy is transferred down the length of the screwdriver. But as soon as I take the magnet off, it falls off. See? Now it won't work any oops. Now it won't work anymore. See? But the moment I put the screw the, the magnet back now it'll pick it up again. See? Take the magnet off. Now I won't do it. So the same thing is happening here. Ow. The same thing is happening here is that the magnetic energy gets transferred up. And when these cans touch each other, the magnetic energy is directly transferred into the next can and into the next can. That's why it's important that we put shielding or spacers. Not shielding, I'm so sorry. Paper spacing or whatever spacers you like that is non-magnetic between the shielding. So when we start using this material here, 
to build the stators that I've been building, I put spacers in between all of this, and the effectiveness is amazing. And I'll tell you, I'm not really sure what this is made out of, but I'll tell you, this stuff is thinner than this. And this does a better job, even though this is thicker. I don't know why, maybe because it's, this has been corrugated versus being flat, I don't know. I just don't, I'm not a metallologist, so I couldn't really tell you. Maybe somebody's watching this video can leave a comment why the thicker can is not working as well as the thinner metal. So, it could be the fact that I have more steel in this and less tin, I just don't know. Anyway, that's the end of this tutorial. I just wanted to show you why and how magnetic shielding works. And it is indeed the holy grail because it truly does allow us to suppress the magnetic flux or the magnetic field of a magnet within close proximity of this, of, of the shielding. Because these magnets are so powerful right here. I've already put, I didn't put it away. I have the other one back up here. The other one's still in the can over there, still inside there that anything within about this much, I guess, what is that? Eight inches, maybe 10 inches, anything within this field, it starts sucking it right on in. You can feel the attraction. Ugh. Okay. Now, where am I? I'm about, wheel's already moving. I'm, uh, what about, about 10 inches out? See the wheel starting to move already? How far away I am from the wheel. See? These magnets are very powerful. So. The point being here is that the magnetic field that we otherwise would detect, at least coming out, at least to here, it's gone. There's basically no magnetic field at all down here. Alrighty. Thank you so kindly for watching. And hopefully for you newbies and magnet heads, hopefully this has got you uh, excited and interested in maybe building some of my staters or make your own design. You don't have to copy mine. It's just, you don't have to copy what I'm doing. You can come up with your completely new design as long as you use this basic principle that I have shared with you here. Or who knows, maybe you'll come up with your own. Alrighty, take care.